Yeah, so thank you for having me here today. Um, I'm happy to uh, be here to talk about the Small Solar System Bodies Panel for the Decadal Survey effort that's undergoing right now. Uh, a little bit of this is, since we heard from Alex Hayes yesterday, going to be a little repetitive, but you know, not everybody can tune into everything all of the time. So I think it's really important to start at the at the beginning, anyways, and uh, and you know, just you know, not take things for granted. So what is a decadal survey? This is a current status of the entire scientific disciplines. It defines the priorities and key scientific questions for the next decade, prioritizes what these important initiatives are. Um, it's conducted by the National Academies, independent of the sponsoring agencies. So this is not NASA's study. This is not NSF's study. This is done by the National Academies. And that's a very important distinction that independently uh, gives it validity to inform these agencies. So the NASA, NASA authorization acts have required these, which is great because it's a good way for the community to get this independent prioritization in place. Um, and uh, importantly, the surveys are not just supposed to say what are the top priorities, but they actually have to demonstrate that they're feasible. So getting these independent cost assessments and technical assessments done as part of whatever the survey is going to recommend for the projects and missions is a, is a key part of this whole activity in order to not just have priorities, but priorities that you know are feasible to actually happen in the next decade. And so this was done in 2003 and 2013, and this one that comes out will be the 2023 Planetary Science and Astrobiology Decadal Survey. Um, and these really do have a lot of weight, not just with NASA and NSF who look at them and other sponsoring agencies, but Congress, you know, looks at these and takes them very seriously as well. And uh, repeatedly they have been used to, to help uh, when hard decisions have to be made and choices have to be made about, there's so many amazing things that you can do and you can't do them all, which ones are the highest priority? That's where this comes in. So I really do think this is an important activity and, uh, and I'm happy to be part of it. Um, the overall organization is, uh, is pretty simple in this view. Uh, you know, there's a steering group and there's two co-chairs, Robin Knapp and, and Phil Christensen. And then there's, uh, and then also on the steering group, there are the six panel vice chairs and 11 other members. So there's six sub panels of which I'm the chair of the small solar system bodies. Um, but on the steering committee, I'm not on the steering committee. Our vice chair is on the steering committee. That's Carol Raymond. I'll show that on the next slide. So overall, if you took all of this together, I counted it up last night, it's 97 people are involved on the steering group and then these different panels. And like I said, I'm chairing the small solar system bodies panel. Carol Raymond is the vice chair. So is this very important liaison key between the work that we're doing and that steering group, which is overseeing all of the panels. Um, we've got a panel made up of uh, 13 other members. Additionally, I won't um, read through all of them right now, but um, this has been a panel that's been working really hard. I really have been uh, valuing everybody's time that they're putting into this activity uh, already so far. And it's been, um, it's been really fun in some ways, actually, because we've got this great group of people from all across these uh, different institutes and with different expertise. And it's been good to have these discussions and have everybody bring that different expertise and these different perspectives to the table. And so um, just really appreciate their time. Um, and, uh, and I want to put their names up here because um, as I'll get to in a point, we want to hear from people. So you should feel free to, to reach out to people on the panel. So what's new this time um, versus previous decadal surveys? There's a higher profile for astrobiology and planetary defense. So this is definitely new and of relevance to SFAG. Planetary defense is included specifically for the first time in this decadal survey activity. This is a great opportunity to get the priorities out there and established and then supported coming in the next decade. Um, more prominence given to de decision rules. Um, human exploration activities and international partners. Connections should also be in discussed in that. And more opportunities for multidisciplinary collaborations with other science mission directorates or other agencies or international partners. I think this is a forward looking important way because this is the reality that we live in as planetary scientists. And also additionally, taking into account the related state of the profession, because at the end of the day, this is foundational to everything that we do as a science community. And you can't pretend to not address this and go about our, our field. So what's gonna be a little different, you've probably heard some of this before too, is gonna to be organized not by bodies, but by uh, science themes. 
So for example, the small bodies panel is not going to have a chapter like it did last time. Um, and so instead, these chapters are going to be around these cross cutting science questions and other topics that you need. Um, and then people are going to go work in these working groups from across the panel and across the steering group um, in order to make this happen. And so this is the uh, graphical depiction of that process. Every time I see this, it actually kind of freaks me out a little bit because I'm so comfortable over here on the left where we've got all our nice little boxes and they're in a row. And then we're going to go and uh, this is the process where it's going to get all mixed up and people are going to go all over the place and, and we're going to have all of these questions. But taking a step back, I think this is super consistent with what SBAG has been saying for a while, right? I mean, if you're just lumping all small, small bodies together, regardless of where they are in the solar system or what science they're addressing, that's really short-sighted. You need to take a step back and think about what are the science questions that address here. So even though this might be a, a little messy on this diagram right here, I think the mess is worth the effort because I really do think that this is the way forward where we start to talk about how is how do you address all these different science goals with everything that we have in there. We don't just lump everything because you want to call it small into the same category, but really think about how do we address these questions? Where does it contribute? And I think it's a real opportunity for the small bodies. Um, community in particular because of this organization that's going to happen for this for this uh, survey. So this is where I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for uh, the white papers. Um, there were more than 500 received. Um, I have a whole new perspective on actually how important and valuable these white papers are. Um, I really appreciate SBAG's uh, organization in order to have some high level papers, but then all of the other ones that came in um, are equally used. Um, and I guess I want to say too that this is not a read and done sort of thing. We are constantly using these as references as we're going through this whole process. And so we are going back to white papers that we've read before. We're going to continue to do that. Um, overall, we've got 135 that are specifically relevant to the small bodies panel and then another 71 on top of that for the general state of the profession topics which are relevant to everyone. And so that foundation that we're all built on as a planetary science community. So, um, so that I just really appreciate everybody's efforts, and we are definitely uh, using those as a, a very important resource. So, with those white papers and determining these uh, things, this is kind of like uh, where we are. Alex talked a little bit about this about developing the cross cutting themes, identifying additional mission studies that are needed, and then having this progress of in the next decade. Um, you know, what specific tasks can address these. Um, yeah, and then once you do that, I have another schedule coming up. It's going to be uh, more cost and schedule realism by this independent contractor to get the feasibility. And overall, there's going to be a prioritized missions at the end and overall recommendations and sort of uh, spring 2022. But let me jump ahead because I want to leave some time for questions. Um, so we've been busy as a small bodies panel. Uh, we have a mix of open and closed meetings and you're welcome to come to the open sessions. Uh, here's sort of a summary. All of this is on the National Academy's website too, but we've been uh, hearing from a lot of different people informed by the concept studies, like the one to Vesta and series that were done to support the decadal survey, hearing from major projects like Neo Surveyor, um, hearing from some of the white papers that we felt uh, you know, were critical to the discussions that we were having. Um, we've uh, been hearing from NASA, we've been hearing from NSF, uh, so we've been hearing from the Cross Ag EDI working group, um, really sort of uh, all over the place, you know, to sort of, along with the white papers, this is another way for us to get information is in these open sessions. So we're really trying to use these open sessions to inform our discussions. If we feel like we need some more information to, to, to get, um, to help us, this is, this is what the purpose of the open sessions are. Um, and so that was 2020. Now moving into 2021, we just had a session uh, last week, actually devoted mostly to radar discussions, sort of the ones that are coming up here for SBAG, and that was really useful. Thank you to those of you who participated. Um, our next meeting is going to be on February 10th, um, and then we'll move into March. And pretty much we've gotten a schedule where we're going to do uh, roughly every third Wednesday after that. Um, at the same time, these mission concept studies have started, these additional ones. Um, they started actually about like last week and they're going to continue through the mid-spring. So that goes on along with our panel meetings, along with these chapter writing groups. So it's going to be a busy spring and summer for 2021 for sure with this whole activity. 
So this is the more detailed schedule. I'll just put this up here too, um, and you guys will have these slides available. But here we are in 2021. Um, and so delivering these priority missions, which ones need to get independently costed is sort of this summer um, of 2021. And then uh, findings and recommendations are kind of in the fall with a draft in the fall sent to the external reviewers at the end of this year. So this is sort of like gives you the high level view of like where this process is and when it's gonna come out. And there in 2022, you should keep in mind LPSC 2022. That's sort of the, the goal for being able to share the results of the survey with the community. So um, with that, I'll, I'll end there and hopefully have a few minutes for questions. One thing I do wanna stress is that um, you can reach out to me or to any panel member at all during this entire effort. There's my email. Um, I know SBAG had a finding last time that, uh, you know, was concerned, especially in this COVID environment and everything else about whether all the voices are being able to be heard. We can still take input. You can still talk to us. I might not be able to tell you answers, but things can definitely come in to us as a panel. So I really, uh, people should feel, feel that we want this to reflect the community going forward and are very open to getting your inputs and comments. So thank you.